what's up you guys? Today we're in a 2014 Fiesta ST Stage 3, not by any particular brand really, it's a piece together kit essentially. The tune is by JS Tune. This is actually one of the rarest colors on the Fiesta ST as well, and it has a really nifty gold flake in it. So I was at an event not too long ago called the iTrack event, it's up in northern Georgia, and it's above Beaufort, right by Road Atlanta, and I saw this little tiny green bean just zipping around and I was like that thing is ke keeping up with everyone little did I know the owner was actually a pretty experienced track driver and he also drives this SD all the time he's actually also an instructor for other track days at Jay Zilla which is pretty cool so it all added up and he knows how to balance out a car this car is extremely balanced the Fiesta ST is a great platform if you want to get into track stuff I did the Octane Academy last year where I learned how to do like J turns and stuff like that and I also learned how to apex things in the Fiesta ST now compared to the Focus ST the Focus ST is a hundred percent faster out of the box but is it as enjoyable as the Fiesta? That's debatable. In my opinion, I would actually take a Fiesta ST over a Focus ST. Focus RS, that's a different story. But Focus ST over Fiesta ST, I wouldn't do it. I think that this thing is a little tiny go-kart and it's so enjoyable to drive because it's so balanced and composed. And it's very Miata syndrome, except front wheel drive, it's momentum beast. But with the stage three, this thing rolls out because of the tiny little turbo. So you have a lot of torque down low and second gear especially is ridiculous as we're gonna find out. You know what, this is second gear. I'm gonna straighten out for a second and go. Oh, it makes a nice sound though. <laughs> Turbo smart blow off valve, choo chooing away. Yeah, that was extremely linear power band. It's really easy to control, zero torque steer. I was actually pretty surprised. I was like preparing myself to do this number and fight it, but no issue. It wasn't bad at all. It also has H&R springs and Coney shocks. And what's funny is at first, the stock suspension performed better, but then they got sway bars for the car and then it really evened everything out. They said without the sway bars that the body wouldn't roll enough to get traction, so. So the exhaust on this car is MBRP. You have a downpipe and full exhaust out the back and it doesn't sound too bad. Occasionally you get a little bit of drone, but I'm talking like that much, but the drone is there. So third gear, reeling it out. It's weird because I'm like waiting for the power to come on, but there's hardly any lag at all. It's really impressive. All right. Oh, backfire. <laughs> Another look at backfire. And around the bend, ease around it. Easy. Easy as can be. No torque steer, no anything. Didn't even have to think about it. What I love about the color scheme of this car with the green is that he's done all like black accenting. So the badge and the grill is all blacked out now, but also the wheels on this are niche wheels and they have a really aggressive, almost HRE look in a way. And I've never seen wheels like this on a Fiesta. So when I saw it on the car, I was like, it's a really good looking Fiesta because the Fiesta, some people kind of rice out occasionally and then they get accused of being a ricer and then they get to a stoplight and then they hit their blow off valve and be like, oh, it's turbo. But now I guess I can't call it that anymore. The Fiesta SD, I've covered this before, but inside the interior is pretty solid. The only thing I think that looks kind of cheap in the Fiesta SD is the gauges. But other than that, everything's super nice. All the materials inside are in the right price range of this car and bang for your buck for a performance car is awesome when it comes to this. And I think the Fiesta was one of the best things Ford ever did. When they decided that they were gonna spit out a bunch of performance cars, I feel like that this one in particular was overlooked for a while. Cause they're like, I don't wanna buy a Fiesta. Like, well, who wants to do that? And then people saw them tracking them and also going on back roads with them and realizing that, okay, maybe I need to give this thing a try. And with the shifter, the seating position, everything feels like a go-kart, but not so much to the point where it feels like sketchy. It is a small car, but it feels like controllable and it doesn't feel like you're flying a kite when you're going high speed, essentially. And go, oh, that, that felt good. It's crazy because, first I can have a conversation with you as I'm doing this, but second, 
The EcoBoost motors by Ford are really no joke anymore. A lot of people gave them flack when they first came out, but then you have the Taurus SHO, and then you have the trucks, even the new Ford Raptor uses them. And then the even smaller ones, like in this, still rip, even though they don't have as much horsepower, they still deliver power very well to the ground. And it's not like you're spinning all over the place like a Mazda Speed 3 or something. You know, you don't have that crazy, I'm going this way, going this way, you know, like a turbo Honda too. Another thing too that I noticed when I first saw this car was the arrow on the front with the front lip. I was like, that looks really good because the Fiesta is like a little tiny bead, but by adding that little lip at the bottom, it kind of created a more aggressive look. The headlights combined with that, the headlights have this kind of slant to them as well. And with that, creates a more aggressive look overall. All right, third gear, roll into it, spool. The Fiesta ST was also a favorite of a lot of car journalists as well because it was this kind of hidden gem because everyone was so focused on the Focus ST because that was such a big step for Ford. The Focus ST was a great car, still is a great car. But with the Fiesta being kind of overshadowed with the less horsepower, a lot of people didn't notice it right off the bat. And then later they go, oh my God, we've been really missing out on basically a front wheel drive Miata with a turbo on it. Put it this way, my friend James Woods, he's probably watching, he has a two rotor RX-7 FC that's like fully spec'd out in that eye track. The owner of this and James were going at it the entire time. That, I think that's just a great testament to show like a fully basically caged gutted car versus this in tight turns and this was pretty much for the most part able to keep up. Ah. <laughs> oh, bogged a little bit, that was my fault. Yep, hit a bump, no worries. <laughs> Super easy, that's all I gotta say. A lot of people might say, oh, is there just not enough driver involvement because it's easy? No, there's driver involvement, 100%. It's just when somebody builds a car just for overall balance and cornering, it just shines. I mean, boom. And I get a nice blow off valve every single time I let off the gas. Another thing too I want to add is on the back, he has every track he's ever done. And I think that's a really cool testament to his experience and he's even done VIR in this car which is one of the scariest tracks in the United States with, without a doubt and you got to go flat footed almost no matter what in VIR on the back straight yep he is around easy peasy no big deal bump let's see it nope no bump actually didn't even feel it brakes Third gear, yep, right around. <laughs> Didn't even flinch. So the whole body like felt like it squatted down and did exactly what it needed to do. That was awesome. So on that note, guys, I had a fantastic time driving the Fiesta ST Stage 3. It is a complete package. If you want to get into autocross or track driving, I 100% totally recommend it. It's one of the best cars out there for it. And well, I'll see you guys next time and take it easy. Have a fantastic day. Bye.